Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Coffee Conversations with Greg J is on. <clears throat> Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. I know I did. Been on the road last week, our last Coffee Conversations. We uh, delivered that to you on the road, 50 floors above the strip. <laughs> Had a great message from the California Secretary of State, Dr. Shirley Weber. You can see that on demand. You probably should look at that if you're in California because we got the special recall election coming up and she's got some important information. If you have questions and all that, she's probably got the answer. Uh, plus we're posting a lot of information across our platforms, beachcityradio.com, Coffee Conversations with Greg J. Just check it all out. Uh, because it's important here in the state of California, what's going on, which whatever side of the fence you're on in this issue, just get out there and vote, exercise your right to vote. If you've already received your ballot, go ahead and, uh, you know, send it in. You can do that. Early voting is uh, on and popping right now. This Thursday night at 6 p.m., we're going to have a town hall meeting. Uh, regarding the recall election. I've reached out to some uh, great friends. Uh, we've got Councilman Al Austin of the city of Long Beach coming through. We've got uh, Carolyn Fowler, who is the um, chair of the Women's Caucus of the California Democratic Party, and she's on the Democratic National Committee. We even have the Republican side. Mr. Craig DeLuce is coming. He's from the California Republican Assembly. And then we have Dr. Anthony Samad giving us that academic intellectual analysis of the whole thing. It should be a great time. You can uh, tune in at six o'clock. We'll be posting when, when and where. Well, right here, Coffee Conversations with Greg J. And across our other platforms, you can check it out. Beach City Radio, beachcityradio.com. Great weekend. I hope that you have, um, you know, really been taking the time to rest and relax, contemplate, reflect. Do you know, the times that we are in is causing great self-reflection, isn't it? You know, great self-reflection. People are passing away. If it's not from the pandemic, maybe it's from something else. We lost Michael K. Williams, Omar, yesterday. Heroin overdose mixed with fentanyl. I guess that's what they're saying. Okay, I should say suspected heroin overdose. <sighs> you know, these drugs are killing us out here, man, and it's it's scary, you know? So um, it's easy to say don't do drugs and all that there, but uh, certainly um, people are hurting and they're choosing to anesthetize themselves in one way or another. And I would just say, you know, Make the right decisions. That's not the way. Right? At least that's what I'm thinking. So, but enough about that. We got a great show this morning. We have got a great, great show. You know, we're talking about self reflection. And so, right before Juneteenth, right, I started getting, you know, in my emails and the messages and everything, this song, right? Time for Reparations by Sounds of Blackness. You know, Sounds of Blackness, one of my favorite groups of all time. You know, Optimistic and all those other songs. I mean, just always just the soundtrack of consciousness, if you ask me. And my good friend Gary Hines is here this morning. He's going to talk about Time for Reparations. I can't play, I'm not going to play it in context of this broadcast, except that I'm going to put it in the chat. And the reason for that is, you know, we do these live streams and when you use music, they get, you know, they get dinged, uh, copyright claims. And this is a big issue. It's crazy to me because I could take that song and put it on my timeline if I got it off of YouTube, no problem. But if I put the YouTube in context of this live stream, then they're dinging me. Even more silly than that, if I, I subscribe to um, certain services where you license the music, you know, for production music and all of that, as for instance, the theme song coming in is a licensed music bed that I got off of one of the services that I pay every month for. 
that service even is advertising very heavily on social media that you'll never get a copyright claim. Well, guess what? They always ding me for copyright claim for my theme song. And I have to go and say, hey, I paid for this. You know, it's just like crazy. So just industry insider stuff. But uh, man, Gary, good morning, sir. How are you today? Good morning, my brother. Bless you at all. Great to see you and hear you. Yes, sir. Great to see you too there, Gary Hyde. Shoot, I know, I know you musicians need to get paid and whatnot, but you sure is making it hard for a brother out here. <laughs> Well, brother, you know, since we haven't been playing, we ain't been getting <laughs> so, you know, it, it's harder on us than anybody. Yeah, that's true. That's true, isn't it? You know, I was just talking about that. Uh, I spent uh, uh, some time in Las Vegas, went to a conference, right? But I we decided that we would stay and just unplug and everything. And I saw a show, a Michael Jackson tribute. And right. uh, as I was analyzing it, you know, I'm I'm seeing the bass player was missing and they were playing the bass through the tracks, you know. And I was just wondering, I said, I wonder, you know, did they show up to work or, you know, are they using the same musicians? Because, you know, people haven't been working for more than a year, you know what I'm saying? And they, they're just now getting back to it, especially in a place like Las Vegas. I bet you there's so many artists and stuff that are just glad to get back to work. Right, absolutely. By any means necessary. Virtual performances, uh, Sounds of Blackness, we've, Brother Greg, we uh, over the past year really, um, and in recent months have uh, gone into a studio large enough where we could socially distance safely and all that kind of thing and, and filmed uh, some of our songs that you mentioned, Optimistic and Sick and Tired and, and, and some of the other classics um, to be able to utilize and offer those four performances we've used it for the for the black uh philanthropy uh conference uh for the national black women's convention uh, we sent them lift every voice and sing and we sent them hold on change is coming and it's a performance you know you as uh you know you do what you got to do yeah 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 it's a, a really a fascinating thing we too have uh, pivoted in that vi virtual space and uh, we've done, uh, we did the Juneteenth uh, Festival uh, with the uh, Black Arts LA. And we actually did two of them. We did early on in the year, we did in Long Beach, the Martin Luther King celebration. Uh, we've done, uh, what else, Arts Council for Long Beach. And we've upgraded our capabilities in our studio so that we can manage and produce and do the same things that we would do if we were producing those festivals like we used to do. Uh, in the virtual space. And now the whole thing is hybrids, you know. So Gary, let right. me ask you this question. How do you think the audience is feeling about, um, you know, this virtual performances? I know we're rushing back out here to shoot the Hollywood Bowl is pop popping. I think I'm going to go to a show soon. Uh, you know, Hollywood yeah. Bowl is popping and everything like that. But still, you know, I think the virtual stuff will not go away. I just think it'll be, um, you know, hybrid where a mixture of both. Right. Do you think that, how do you feel the consumers are going to adapt to this new paradigm of music consumption? Well, you know, the old Les McCann, real compared to what, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, obviously everybody, both performer uh, and audience, prefers live performances. I know we surely prefer to, to play live, but, you know, when we look at the other side of that coin, if there's no performance at all, then, you know, that's, the least uh, desirable. So there's got to be a middle ground, and that middle ground is these virtual performances. Because uh, and, and it's funny, uh, and just you, 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 the wisdom in your question, because uh, when virtual first started, uh, or, or the the opportunity uh, and and the clamor for them, um, and it was kind of experimental. Um, people were like, uh, you know, we we don't know about this kind of thing. But then when we went so long without any performances, people were like, yes, please, please do it virtual. So. It, it, it's it's not, uh, you know, the, the live is preferred by both the audience and the performer, but uh, what's least preferred is nothing at all. So uh, the virtual, you know, fills that gap. Mm -hmm. That's something, isn't that something? Yeah. Well, in the meantime, I know you've been rolling, you've been rolling kind of hard since the murder of George Floyd there. Uh, you were even, uh, you know, the, the day after it happened, you were even with us uh, in your car. You know, you were going down there yeah. to the site. And I know you ran into our friend Najee Ali out there and uh, out yes. there on, on the streets. And 
you know, we you've checked in with us from time to time to, to talk about what's going on in, in your beautiful city of Minneapolis. And uh, man, right around Juneteenth, here you come with Time for Reparations. Tell me the inspiration for that. I mean, this is a strong song, bro. I, well, you know, all your songs Thank are strong, you. but this is a strong song. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, uh, a couple of things by way of answering your question, uh, brother Greg. Um, I always quote the great uh, uh, legendary uh, country artist, uh, Chet Atkins, who was known as a great songwriter. And when he was interviewed and asked, you know, how did he write such great songs? I loved his response. He said, there are no songwriters. All music is given. And, and, and I subscribe to that as well. And since it's given to us, really it becomes our job not to mess it up, but we're given. Um, but, but the other side of, uh, of the answer to your question, Brother Greg, is um, Sounds of Blackness and I always, you know, we, we live in this community here in the heart. You know, we rehearse five blocks from where George Floyd was murdered. Uh, we always have boots on the ground, grassroots, uh, and, and keep an eye, eyes on the prize. And we, we looked, we saw a few things. We saw that around the country this year that uh, reparations was a theme for many of the Juneteenth uh, um, commemorations and celebrations. Uh, we see Congressional Black Caucus had submitted H.R. 40. Uh, a lot of people ask, what's the 40 for? The 40 is for 40 acres and a mule, as I know you know. So that, that, that's not, uh, you know, just happenstance, it's deliberate. Um, uh, the NAARC, the National African American Reparations Commission um, is, is active uh, in, in Evanston, Illinois. There's already a reparations program that, that's underway for those that say, oh, it's never gonna happen. And I say, no, it's already happening. So, you know, it's just gonna proliferate from here. And uh, the, the final piece to answer that question, Brother Greg, is, as you know, um, every, phase every of, of the movement, our people's movement for, for justice and equality has always had um, an anthem with it. Uh, in the 60s with the civil rights movement, of course we had uh, Angle Let Nobody Turn Me Around No Freedom, but everybody knows the primary anthem was We Shall Overcome. And then fast forward to uh, the 70s, uh, the Black Power, the Black Pride movement. Uh, we had, of course, Aretha with uh, Young, Gifted and Black and, and, and Nina Simone, but everybody knows the primary anthem was my favorite artist, The Godfather, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And I'm proud. <laughs> right, right. And four years ago, uh, Sounds of Blackness did an anthem for the Black uh, Lives Matter movement, and we sent that to the National Black Lives uh, Office and uh, the co-founder, Sister Alicia Garza. And now, with uh, reparations being just in the wind everywhere, uh, we're like, okay, you know what? This needs an anthem, and, and Sounds of Blackness needs to do it. All right. That's what's up, man. I really, really love it. You know, uh, Dr. Shirley Weber, who's now the California uh, Secretary of State, but at one point was an assembly member in the state of California coming out of San, my hometown, San Diego, California. But she mm -hmm. had been uh, authored and it was advancing a bill uh, through our state assembly for reparations. I'm sorry, I can't remember the number of it, but it is uh, out there. She speaks of it when you guys go back and look at her conversation with me from last Thursday. She talks about it. Mm -hmm. She talks about, you know, and I asked her, I said, well, you know, what does reparations look like? And uh, she was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's the cities and these uh, municipalities and state governments are all facing, you know, reconciliation in the wake of, of uh, the murder of George Floyd. They're really beginning to consider, you know, systemic racism and all of that. But it's one thing to consider the stuff, but it's another thing to act on it, you know. And so yeah. she talked about the reconciliation commissions of South Africa, how Okay, it's one thing when you take the stand and you say, hey, you hurt me, you destroyed my family, you killed my mother, brother, sister, father. And uh, and then it's another thing to, <clears throat> you know, to give back uh, what was taken in view of that mm -hmm. of that heinous, that heinous murder, murders and abuse that they've been given. So we want to know what does reparations look like, you know, and I know that everybody has a, a different view of what it is, you know, I, I'll take a check, you know, but uh, what, uh, what does it look like to you there, Gary? Well, my brother, and I'm so glad you asked that because I just did uh, uh, an interview last week uh, with a brother and sister and, and forgive me whose name I'm forgetting, but who have done an exhaustive work uh, and, and, and book on reparations and actual with uh, formulas, with specifics for that in terms of 
of payment and methods of payment and so on and so forth. Hopefully their names will come to me shortly. But one of the things that they pointed out uh, and, and that I'd like to point out is that there's really, uh, we, we many people think of, of uh, reparations as just uh, in, in, a, in a monolith, just in terms of, uh, you know, the, the 300 plus years uh, of free labor, uh, slave labor. And obviously that, that's at the core of it, but actually there's three uh, um, areas uh, that, that demand redress. Obviously, mm-hmm. the, the centuries of free labor mm-hmm. and then 100 years of, of Jim Crow reconstruction, because all of that was rife with illegalities and the continuation uh, of peonage uh, and slave camp labor or prison camp, all of those things. And then beyond mm-hmm. that, into uh, the more uh, contemporary era uh, of everything from housing, redlining, uh, um, mass incarceration. I mean, so there, there's those three elements. It, it's not just uh, um, the, the the three centuries of free labor. And mm-hmm. uh, all of that, they point out, you know, it, it's so it's so funny because the, the first, f- frequently the first response, uh, especially to those questioning or opposed to it is, oh, how can you ever do that? Well, there's no way. No, it's, and actually it's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, you know, and it's, very tangible, especially when you break it down like that for, uh, as we say, American descendants of, of, of uh, African slaves and, and all of the, the government uh, inst- institutionalized forms uh, of, of repression uh, and brutality that, that were sanctioned uh, uh, by this government. And so it's a matter of record and, and, and it's not that difficult. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Time for reparations. I put the link in the chat, y'all. You'll see it there, uh, and you can just hit that link and listen to that fantastic song. Uh, that'll you. give that'll keep that'll keep us ding free, <laughs> you know. And now you know what it's such a timely song now because you know not only are we. Like I say, you know, we're in this space of self-reflection, right? We've had we mm-hmm. man, we've been locked in the house because of the pandemic. Right. Took the vaccinations. Now they're talking about they want to get us a booster. Oh man, you know, social justice stuff is happening. You know, we don't know what the heck is going on. All these, I mean, just so much is happening in this country. Now the latest thing is, you know, they've been pulled out of Afghanistan. We don't know what's going to happen. Right. Uh, you know, you know, people are stressed. People are looking inward. I mean, the self reflection is so pervasive right now that folks aren't even. You know, they're not trying to go to work. You know, the, the right. people are saying, come back to come back to work. And people are like, nope, I ain't coming back. I like working from here. And right. I was listening to something yesterday where the sister was saying, you know what? I must stay right here at the house. I don't have to code switch. I don't have to deal with the microaggressions. I could be right here in the house, get my work done and take care of my stuff. You know, and so what mm-hmm. a, a awesome time for time for reparations to come out as we consider all these issues of social justice, voting rights, all the stuff that I just named, man, this is really, really incredible stuff. Oh, Mm -hmm. thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. Sounds of Blackness. You know, we thank you, brother, for your brotherhood and friendship and support uh, of the music, because I'd I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. Um, You, and you always have been for for the listeners and followers and, and watchers who may not know this. Uh, this brother has always been in the vanguard uh, in the legacy uh, of what what black radio and and media has meant to our community. But I say that to say this, both with sick and tired last year, brother Greg, and now with time for reparations, most of so called black radio uh, is afraid to play it. You know, we have a handful of stations, you know, that that are not afraid. Uh, and, and that are playing the record. And what we get, you know what, I'll, I'll just say this quickly so that, that, that all of our viewers understand. You know, as an artist, you put out a record and you know that they may like it or not like it. And if they don't like it, they, you know, the program directors tell you, well, you know what, we love your group, but we're not really feeling this one. And you know, you're, you're, you're disappointed by that, but you move on and you understand. But that's not what we're hearing. What we're hearing is, this is a great track and, and the message is right on time and so on and so forth, but we're afraid to play. We don't want to offend anybody. So many, I guess, of the so-called uh, uh, black radio stations are, are owned by the, the white conglomerates now and controlled. And so they're afraid of offending sponsors or, or even some listeners uh, because, of, you know, <laughs> how, how ironic is it that a call for, for justice or reparations could offend somebody? That, but 
those some of those things. Now, here's my problem. Some of those same stations have no problem uh, with being worried about offending people by playing uh, wet ass pussy. Excuse me. You know, you do no, no problem. No worry about that. But you're worried about offending people with the words of Fannie Lou Hamer or a call yeah. for reparations. So it's been an uphill battle. But thank God for people like you or in the, uh, the true tradition. I remember when black radio, you know, when uh, my God, we, we lived and lived and died by it. I mean, it told us where to go, what to do, you know, when 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 um, unrest so-called broke out or when things were going on kind of thing. We knew that black radio, you guys would would either calm us or, or encourage us, direct us uh, and support the community and, and the movement. And uh, that's just not the case anymore. But my hat's off to you, brother. Man, I really, really appreciate that. Certainly uh, grew up my whole career, you know, black radio, black radio, black radio and, and the importance to community. You know, it is interesting. It lends your your uh, statement just now lends to uh, even deeper discussion because, mm -hmm. you know, I was just watch looking at. Um, I think it was the Radio Hall of Fame had. I guess they call themselves uh, trying to redeem themselves and they inducted like a whole plethora of historic radio, black radio personalities, you know, mm -hmm. and, I mean, we always talk about Frankie Crocker, but, you know, right. it's went down the line, you know, of all these guys that and women that um, were history makers in black radio. And I was looking right. at the list and I was like, well, dang, first of all, the stations that these people played on are no longer black on. Right. It's like I, I remember back in the day they were, you know, that, that was a historic black station, what we call a heritage station. Yeah. Now now they're owned by big giant conglomerates, you know, and, and you're right. The 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 message gets homogenized, you know. We don't want to yeah. offend people. And uh, you know, I think it's all by design, to be honest with you. There's a whole I I'm just gonna say it. For me, my thesis of the whole culture, black culture, right? Mm -hmm. In radio, the big conglomerates, yes, people got paid out and, you know, you sold the black, the voice of the black folks to that big conglomerate. But then what they did is they eliminated the songs of consciousness and yeah. they put the songs of debauchery. And like you said, wet ass pussy, yeah. uh, uh, all the gangsters and uh, I'm killing, I'm dope dealing. I'm uh, all that stuff now is up, you know, up front and they're right. showing to an image of us and our culture to the world, not just yes. to the local community, but to the world. World and said, hey, these people are, you know, are animals. And now all of a sudden it, it, it becomes cool and it becomes sexy and and this is what it, what it is. So they will be glad to put that image out there, but then they don't want to put our words of inspiration, our words of encouragement, our words of social yeah. justice on the air. And that's a doggone shame. Preach, brother. Preach. Sad <laughs> but true. And like I said, yeah. we experience it firsthand but but due to people you know like yourself and like i say a handful of of uh true black radio stations around the country you know i can count on a couple of hands thanks to you we we are undaunted and and uh not discouraged mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes yes sir the struggle continues <laughs> a bit of continue and you know uh, uh fred douglas told us power concedes nothing without a struggle so we yes. continue to struggle Hey, you know, back when you uh, did Optimistic, mm -hmm. I think I first saw y'all at the, I feel like it was the Black Expo in Chicago. I think, they, I think. Okay, right, right. right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we used to have these big, you know, festivals. I mean, you know, yeah, pandemic and everything, but we used to have the big events like that, Black Expo and all that. But when you first came out and Optimistic, you know, hits, what was your what was your vision for the future? Like, what do you what did you see then? And have you accomplished everything that you would have liked to have accomplished now? Excellent, brother. Let, let me answer your question this way. Um, this year is the 50th anniversary of Sounds of Blackness. Uh, we started uh, in January. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By the grace of God, you know, uh, at my alma mater, McAllister College, uh, you know, here in the Twin Cities. Uh, in January of 71. And and actually a group existed right before that called the McAllister College Black Voices. And they brought me on and, and we changed the name to Sounds of Blackness. So this is our 50th anniversary. And and what that has to do by way uh, of answering your question 
is, you know, even back in those days, and, I, and I'm the only remaining, you know, uh, original member, but as, 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 you know, wide-eyed, starry-eyed students, you know, after rehearsals, a long day of classes and, you know, football, track, practice, whatever, and then we, you know, get the sounds of blackness rehearsal, we would sometimes sit around after rehearsal and say, you know, one day, you know what, we're going to travel the world and we're going to win Grammys and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And so when people ask, did you guys ever imagine that these things would happen? We humbly say, actually, yes, we did. Now, again, it was with youthful enthusiasm. And did we know? No. But we would say, we. You know, I guess God was giving us that vision. But, you know, we we are blessed to, to continue uh, that, vi that vision uh, today. You know, we'd be remiss if we didn't say uh, the, the blessings that flew, flowed through our brothers, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who themselves just put out their own record uh, called Volume One. And Sounds of Blackness are blessed to be a part of that, a song called Till I Found You. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and our late brother Prince uh, was a great supporter and longtime friend. So there were people, you know, that, that God used to, to help propel Sounds of Blackness to, to what we've been able to do, brother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Now, what was it like when you won your first Grammy? Like, describe <laughs> that moment. Man, it was, uh, you know, look up in the dictionary uh, at the word surreal and you should see my face next to that because it was, I mean, um, it was overwhelming. Uh, I remember still because we we were all, uh, our touring group was, was at Madison Square Garden. So we're mm -hmm. back home in New York. And for those that don't know, I'm a proud date of Yonkers, New York. So shout out to the East Coast. That's so right. my, I, I had, we had relatives, family there kind of thing. Anyway, um, when they called our name out, Brother Greg, uh, and I got a, a quick, funny uh, addendum to this at the end of this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was like my mind kind of went blank. And, all the, you know, the group all around me was like jumping and screaming and shouting. And they were signaling us to come up to the shade stage. and Because I guess I was in kind of a little bit of a state of shock. Kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and so we got to the stage. And I remember thanking God, first and foremost, in the academy and all that kind of thing. And the group and Jam and Lewis and, and, and the perspective and A&M Records and all of that. Uh, but it was overwhelming. Now, now, here's here's the funny part. We get, you know, because after, you, as you know how this goes, you get the award and then you go to the press room. You know, you don't just go back to your seat. Um, <laughs> and so this was, you know, also boys to men who are dear friends, dear to this day, their first Grammy. So here we are. and They had just gotten theirs. And so we literally bumped into them, you know, going into the press room. And all of us are like crying like newborns. I mean, just uh -huh. wait, wait, you know, to this day, when I see Juan Ye and the guys, we laugh and laugh and laugh about that. So, man, we was crying like newborn babies. Yeah. Um, but it was it was it was overwhelming. But on the serious side, it was it was a validation and affirmation uh, of what Sounds of Blackness is. Uh, about and and uh, what we're still about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, that's incredible! You know, uh, <laughs> really, really interesting. Yeah, Jam and Lewis, they got a new new record out. That's uh, that's really something. I, I know they came to Coffee Conversations when they did the song. They released the song with um, Babyface, and they came to Coffee Conversations, and we got a chance to chop it up. Uh, uh, really, really was uh, proud of them, and they were talking about what was coming up. You know. Um, how, let me ask you this. Uh, we noticed while we were in Las Vegas, a lot of folks, a lot of artists, including Boys and Men, have their residencies now out there. You know, Usher. I mean, there's just a few uh, across all genres. Is the Sounds of Blackness residency, is that a good thing to have in Las Vegas? Do you think that'll play? I'm thinking out loud. What do you think? Are you there? Uh-oh. Looks like my brother is frozen. Ah, oh, we lost him there. Ah, that's I'm sure he'll be right back, y'all. That's uh Brother Gary Hines from Sounds of Blackness. We're chopping it up this morning about their new single, uh, Time for Reparations, you know, just talking about music, talking about, you know, just contemplating our essence in these days and time. We'll wait for him to come right back in the meantime. You know, happy birthday to Ruben Rodriguez. You heard uh, Brother Gary just talk about Perspective Records. And uh, I think that was Ruben Rodriguez and them uh, that was a uh, part of that. And uh, today is his birthday. Happy birthday, Brother Ruben, one of the greatest guys in our, our industry. 
uh, enjoying his his time you know uh you know we were up in uh, las vegas and uh, tomorrow i think is the 25th anniversary is it tomorrow i think it is tomorrow but soon is the 25th anniversary of the murder of tupac tupac shakur up there in las vegas and you know what a man it's hard to imagine that you know time is flying the way that it is uh, but, you know, we lost uh, Tupac, and then shortly thereafter, we lost Biggie. And, um, you know, two great lyricists, two great artists uh, in their time. Um, there was a discussion I saw, you know, we, we're out here in Long Beach, the home of, home of Snoop Dogg, right? And uh, we were out here, and I saw Charlemagne the God, and then what is that, the Breakfast Club, where they were... Uh, talking about the greatness of Snoop Dogg, and uh, you know, when you when you listen to the discussion now, you're like, dang, you know, this guy really was an influential artist in terms of the the lifting up the career of of Tupac Shakur and and just being a part of that whole essence. And you don't realize that until you listen to you know industry people sit down and analyze the the whys and wherefores. And I'm gonna tell you something: the the whole thing about uh, Tupac and, you know, 25 years, what does his music mean? You know, go back and put some of those uh, records on and, and just just listen to his lyrics. Um, you know, okay, there's some that'll say, you know what, too much for me. Okay, you get that. But at the same time, Tupac, one of the greatest to ever live, 25 years ago, murdered on the streets of Las Vegas, Brother Gary, there he is. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, hey, you know, I was shouting player. out, uh, I was shouting out Ruben Rodriguez, man. You mentioned Perspective Records. I'm like, man, Ruben Rodriguez's birthday is today. Get out of Dodge. Man, <laughs> how's he doing? Hey, he seems to be doing okay. I had spoken to him in a minute. I'm about to give him a shout, you know. Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I think I have uh, some, some info for him, at least online or whatever. Definitely have to give him a birthday shout. My great guy, great guy, yeah, and instrumental, guy. you know, in, in sound success. So that was, I obviously you already know uh, him and so many others. But yeah, happy birthday, brother, if, if you're yeah, tuned yeah. in. That's right. That's right. So, Gary, let me ask you a question. You know, the record store experience is no more, right? It's it's it's, like, it's all online. You know, Sad. It, name some of the record stores your favorite ones across the country. Oh my goodness! Uh, of course, uh, Brother George uh, in Chicago. Um, George's the, music I mean, room. That, <laughs> yes, he's got to be at or near the top of the list. Uh, you know, I mean, we would you didn't go to Chicago and not go by George's music room um, and do an in-store, do some signings, you know, some photographs, all that kind of thing. Um, certainly uh, uh, in LA and around your stomach and ground, uh, one of the big uh, supporters, and there were, there were more than one, uh, but at the time, Tower Records was actually mm -hmm. a big, a re and, and I know they were bigger, more, a little more corporate, which, but but they were very very supportive of Sounds of Blackness. We we did many in stores uh, with them, um, and then there was a store. And hopefully you would remember the name of this. And forgive uh, my 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 grandma from North Carolina used to say, "Boy, you got a good forgettery." So forgive my forgettery. But there was one uh, in in the uh, uh, Black Mall in L.A. that I'm that I'm, I'm the names escape me up. We would always go there and do in stores. There was a theater, there, Magic Johnson theaters, and all that. There was a restaurant, uh -huh. all that there. We would always uh -huh. go there, but. But um, and uh, so you're talking about the uh, VIP records. Yeah, but thank you. God bless you. I, I knew you would know. Um, yeah, 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 VIP. You know, you didn't go to LA without you know at least making the stop and 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 doing that thing. Um, but you know, VIP had like about seven locations, man, all across the city. That now, was now that I didn't know. Spot. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the spot, oh, you know. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. Tower Records and Warehouse. God bless them, but you know the. The, the hood, we we yes. VIP records was that that was the one. <laughs> that was yeah. Thank you, thank you for, for your help with my recollection there. I, I just could not think of the name, but absolutely VIP. You know, and then after that, you know, we 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 uh, go to Roscoe's and eat. <laughs> uh -huh. That's right, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, and now you know how. So how are the records? 
you know, with the record industry changing, as we talk about all of the technology and everything, you know, folks, the record buyer is streaming more. Right. So, so for an artist like yourself, it's it's not really about the record sales as much as it is of uh, now you got to get out and perform. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we we sounds of blackness. We we miss uh, the record store. I mean, that it's just a whole other experience. Uh, the, the there's actually even in an, an affinity for for physical product. I mean, going back to the days of of albums, or as we would sometimes call them, albums. <laughs> <laughs> Even CDs that you could that you could hold and that, that you physically sign, have the artist sign, you know, make make notes on, compare notes. I mean, uh, for Sounds of Blackness and Jam and Lewis to be the first to tell you, our first few records uh, on A and M perspective, we patterned our uh, uh, artwork progression of the records after uh, one of our favorites uh, and and dear brothers and friends, Earth, Wind, and Fire. So that there was always a continuous theme, we, uh, you know, obviously it sounds of black its own theme, but I mean, you know, with uh, with our Afrocentric uh, 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 perspective and so on and so forth. Um, but but I know you remember looking forward not only to 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 new uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire recordings, but to see what the next album cover was going to look like, you know, kind of thing, because they were always so creative. So um, missing even components like that the, the physicality of, of, of physical product because there's, there's like an emotional uh an affectional uh, uh, attachment to that um but but uh you know with now with with streaming and so forth uh or sometimes quote unquote file sharing where where, where nobody gets any money mm-hmm. um the live performances like you say uh, are, are are key and then enter covid and there go the live performances so mm-hmm. Uh, you know, artists out here are, are struggling. I mean, I'm sure you've heard it's not just independent artists like Sounds of Blackness. Um, who was it? Uh, some of the Bruce Springsteen, uh, uh, who's some of the main that had tours set up for this fall have canceled with the resurgence of COVID. Folks mm-hmm. not getting vaccinated. Sounds of Blackness, we're vaccinated. I am, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so it was looked like it was going to open up. In fact, we had a couple of, uh, of LA dates pending kind of thing, but now, and even a couple of overseas live dates that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, are now at least going to be postponed uh, and, and mm-hmm. hopefully not canceled uh, with mm-hmm. the resurgence, but it, it's, it's rough out here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. something to be said about that record record store experience, especially with the, remember the 45s, you would get your little oh, list huh? and, and say, okay, I want that one, that one, that, you know, and it's, right, it's, right. There, there was the whole thing of flipping through the records. And uh, now let me yeah. ask you this, would you issue something in vinyl? I noticed the vinyl is coming back. I, I love it. Um, and I know a lot of the, the audio file clubs around the country are, are, um, uh, really making a resurgence kind of thing that that uh, I, uh, that it's about wax and and I love that. Um, but the answer is yes, we absolutely would. In fact, it's so funny you say that. This morning, uh, a local record store that that's legendary around here is called the Electric Fetus. Uh, I think Prince even referenced them in Purple Rain, um, and they really are supportive of local artists and all that kind of thing. But they they contacted us and you know wanted because uh, we've done everything digitally with the. The past couple of singles with uh, Sick and Tired last year and with Time for Reparations now. And so they asked us if we would do at least even a limited edition of physical product for them. And we said yes. So I called my engineer, uh, Carl Diemer, at a time at K Records where we recorded for the past 20 years. So we're going to do some physical product uh, on something. Oh, this is a great a great segue to, to, to finish out the answer to your question, Brother Greg. Um, in just a, a couple of weeks, we are going to release Sounds of Blacknesses. Um an EP, just an extended play with four songs. We're calling it our justice, the justice project. And it's going to have um, black lives matter, royalty, sick and tired and time for reparations. So all of our hardcore justice, uh, uh, social consciousness, uh, liberation themes all in one package. There's been a clamor for that, you know, online in one way or another. And it's like, you know what, we need to just do an EP and put that together for people. And so we're, it will not only exist, digitally but we're going to do definitely do physical product with that wow wow that's incredible yeah. I, I gotta tell you something man. we need to talk offline about doing something virtual some sort of special special to just the online special this okay that ought to be good the, yeah, the sounds man. of justice <laughs> yeah yeah the justice okay. yeah yeah absolutely okay. and All and right. 
what, what's funny about that too, uh, brother Greg is, um, and because we've, we've done some interviews, you know, like you know, and print media and so forth about that. Mm -hmm. And to, to, to much of the public, and I, and I get it, I understand, um, so it's not bothersome or whatever, and even to some of radio, and, and, and I get it with, with them, um, to them, this is an aberration for Sounds of Blackness. It's like, because they know us from optimistic and I believe and mm -hmm. hold on, change is coming, all those hopeful, uplifting stuff. And of course, that's a part of the essence of who we are, but... I want to let all your your viewers know, and 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 what I've said in interviews repeatedly now. Music of social consciousness and protest, brother Greg, has been in our repertoire from day one. This is in in fact, if anything, the happy songs are an aberration for us, you know, more. Than, but not not the protest social movements are from day one as college students. You know, we were singing Young, Gifted, and Black and Take It From Me, One Day We'll All Be Free. Uh, and I mean, and, and arrangements of some of the civil rights. So we've always been about protest music. So this is not a change for us. You know, and it's, it's timely because I think that we are in, a, I often say this, uh, we're in a state of cultural revolution right now. I think yes, that, uh, you know, uh, George Floyd's murder was a turning point for America in general, but for yes. us in the black community, it caught, and then being locked in again, you know, this whole, we right. started out the show talking about self-reflection. Mm -hmm. Everybody is on this self-reflection. We we're looking at the world differently. We thought we had evolved to a certain standpoint of equality in, in America, but now we are, you know, reminded, starkly reminded that, you know, like my mother used to say during the civil rights movement, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And so uh, that's why we have to have, you know, music like Sounds of Blackness and even the name of your group, Sounds of Blackness. It mm. is what it is. And this, yes, is, this, this, this is how we feel it right now. You know, I, yeah, I don't absolutely. care. <laughs> you know what? And, and, and thank you for mentioning that. Um, you know, a couple of things about that. One, um, again, uh, hats off to, to Jam and Lewis um, because when they signed us, and, and the Sounds of Blackness were, were blessed to be the first uh, act artists assigned to Jam and Lewis's label, Perspective Records, uh, which of course the parent, as I know you know, was a and Records, and, and the parent of that was Polygram Distribution, which at the time was the biggest distribution in the world, and I know you right. know that. That's right. Just yes. by, but I say that to say this, uh, the reason I say hats off to Jam and Lewis is because you have to remember, at the time, they were working with George Michael, who was huge, Human League, uh, uh, Janet, and 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 I'm sure that Polygram and AM expected them to lure those artists, you know, to their label kind of thing. And so when they told AM the first artist that they're signing is Sounds of Blackness, they were like, Sounds of who? Sounds mm -hmm. of what? And how many of them are there? And what's all this blackness stuff? But you know what? Jam and Lewis were undaunted, un, uh, undaunted, unwavering. And the first thing they told me when they signed this brother Greg was uh, Doc. That's always been a nickname for me. Say, Doc, you know, we don't change anything. We want to present you all to the world just the way you are. So uh, always big props to Jam and Lewis. You know, I mean, and, and touches the DNA of the black community. It's a it's a choir with hip hop soul inspirational it's it's gospel but not <laughs> you know what i mean it's just like this whole this, there's a this the whole package you know when you listen to sounds of blackness and now when we begin to talk about you know i'm at an age and the stage in my career where i got plenty left in the take y'all i'm not trying to say i'm over <laughs> but i am a a, a veteran and a, you know a wise sage as i look at you know black music American Black music culture. And when we begin to look at Sounds of Blackness, I feel like it is grafted into the DNA of the Black community, the Black experience in America, yeah. just from the essence of the songs, whether it's inspirational, like Optimistic and I Believe, or, you know, Screaming for Social Justice, uh, like um, uh, our latest song, Time for Reparations. I mean, it just when when you hear a Sounds of Blackness record, it is who we are like to our core. 
yes, as a sir. people, right? And so that's just that is what it is. They they belong in the uh the Black Music Hall of Fame. That's what I say, you know. And so, Thank you, but brother, well, you know, we, we are honored to actually have a permanent exhibit in Nashville at the National uh, African American uh, Mu uh, Music Museum. Uh, and so we we are honored by that. I mean, the Grammys and all that are great, and we treasure them. But I mean, this being in fact, in fact, check this out, Brother Greg. Uh, we are so honored not only to be in the National African American Music Museum in Nashville, but we are right between Duke Ellington and Louis Armstrong. It's like now, now we're not worthy. I know we're not worthy of that. I, I'll be the first to say that. But that's <laughs> where we put us kind of to our exhibit. Uh, so, so yeah, we and we and you know what I say that uh, as humbly as I can. We are just so honored by that. Mm -hmm. That's the one that just opened. They just opened up. Huh? This yeah. year was it this year? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Got to make a trip down to Nashville. All yeah. right, super producer Rhonda Love. You hear that? We go to Nashville. You get it together. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Incredible. You know, it's a okay. Let me ask you this. Uh, you have Soul Train Awards, right? Yes. By the okay. Way. You know, Soul, Soul Train Awards or Grammys? Oh man, you know what? <laughs> Both blessings, but 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 um, our our dear brother, the late great, too many late greats, man. But the late great uh, Don Cornelius, um, you know, uh, just that was the essence. Uh, and then Soul Train is just speaking of essence, it's essence of our people, uh, of our culture. Uh, people, a lot of people I know you know, but too many people don't realize how much Soul Train literally changed the world and the world's. Uh, uh, imagery and uh, uh, of, of, of African American culture, music, dress, dance, uh, uh, you know, all of that kind of thing. And so, um, Soul Train really is the essence of what we're all about. And and Don Cornelius, Don Cornelius was a, a dear friend and mentor and supporter. Man, he, in fact, a quick funny story about him, if I may. Yes, uh, yes. He, uh, you know, I, I always call him Dapper Don. You know. Uh, he always, as I know you know, kept an eye and ear on everything. Didn't nothing go down in L.A. without Don knowing about it, okay? That's so right. one time, Sounds of Blackness, we went to L.A. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, uh, we can't hear you there, Gary. I think you're muted. Let me see. Let me unmute you here. Oh, there you go. Okay, am I back yet? You're back. There okay, you sorry go. Sorry about that. Yeah, no so, worries. So, uh, just, just a quick story. So one time, it sounds, we went to L.A. for some function. I forget what it was. And we were just kind of in and out, you know. And and normally, you know, we, we were there a couple of days kind of thing. You know, we would go by Soul Train. And even if we didn't go on the show, you know, you just pay that homage to Don and, you know, kind of thing. Because, you know, he, he, you know our, our godfather, right? That's right. Thing. That's right. And uh, so, but we didn't do it this time. Just got right back on the plane. So, so about midnight that night, my phone rings and uh, hello. And I hear that unmistakable voice. Oh, uh, brother Hines. <laughs> hey, Dapper Don. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand that you all were in LA, and, but you didn't come by the train. I was like, oh, brother, I'm so sorry. We you know, He said, and I, and I said, well, brother, you know, we, we don't even have anything on the, uh, you know, out on the charts. He said, you are the sounds of blackness. He said, whenever you are in L.A., you come by the train. I said, yes, sir. So just yes, that sir. kind of love and support. Yeah. So so that's why I say Soul Train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soul Train was uh, was the bomb. I mean, it just. Oh, my God. You, 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 you look at the awards, right? And I mean, you know, I'm glad that they brought it back. And it's, it's you know, it's it's still out there. But. It, yeah. Back in the day, it was a, I mean, back in the day, Ooh. it was a thing, <laughs> right? Oh, you had, yeah. Yes, an event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always wonder, and then people are, you know, they were still, you know, vying for recognition with the Grammys. The Grammys are cool, but like when you got the Soul Train Award, that really meant something because that was from the heart of us. For our heart of us, it's kind of like, and, I, and I'll tell you a quick funny story that 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 is a parallel to what you just said. Uh, you know, I, I still get my hair. I live in the hood. I get my hair cut in the hood, you know. And and you know how the old black man in the barbershop, you know, they be telling stories and, and right, right. signifying and testimony and all that kind of thing. So uh, 
we we were uh, oh sounds got an article in, in Rolling Stone and that's so I going to the barbershop and 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 one of the younger heads knew that uh, and said hey man y'all in Rolling Stone and I said oh thank you brother and, and you know, the old brothers were like now when you get in Jet and Ebony then you then something <laughs> under, you know? right and 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 a, a few weeks later we were blessed sounds were to be uh, I think it was in Jet kind of thing. And go into the barbershop. Now you done done something. Now you done done something. Yeah, yeah, yes, <laughs> you know, yes. but so that's that's the same thing with Soul Train. You know, just that that iconic, uh, the heart of us. You know, we're talking about these iconic media institutions, right? We were talking about you know black radio and the struggles that are happening uh, for your music there now. You know, they got co-opted and and bought up by uh, these big conglomerates and so they're not really touching the essence of who we are as a community we're talking right. about you know soul train we talk about i think even bet owned by viacom i just feel like okay it's cool that they got some capitalization but uh yeah. Uh, dang, you know, it, 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 it's so a little, little need a little more seasoning, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and yep. I think that you know, and then the demise, I guess, they're coming back, and I think it's good. Um, Junior Bridgman and his daughter are making moves, they just bought the ebony, and so they're making moves to bring that back out. And you know, what you think that the next generation will treasure black media in the way that. Uh, we did, you know, when we had our radio stations and magazines and Soul Train and thus and so. Well, brother, I would say this. They will if and only if we groom and orient them to do that and educate them to do that. Because a lot of what's happening now, and I'll be the first to say, uh, a lot of what's happening or not happening in some instances with our youth is because we have not adequately passed it on to them, mm -hmm. you know, and oriented and, and, te and taught them and groomed them in that way. So they, they need to know. Um, and and uh, Gamble and Huff song, Message in Our Music, uh, mm -hmm. has a, line, a lyric in there that, that really is the, the essence of, of the answer I'm trying to give you. Uh, it's one of my favorite lines always. In their Message in Our Music song, they have a line that says, understand while you dance. So, in other words, don't stop the party, don't stop all the time, but have consciousness, be aware, and speak. Yeah. So we gotta, you know, tell the kids, go ahead, have your party, do your thing. But here's the consciousness piece of it, and then they'll appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's uh, it's really important, and I think that in this time of cultural revolution that we're talking about, one thing at the beginning of it, I was a little concerned. I said, "Well, where's the music? Where's the soundtrack to all of the stuff that's happening?" Yeah, because yeah. I, did, I at first I didn't hear it, you know. Now I'm yeah. hearing a lot more, but at first I was like, "Dang, you, we're not, we're not ready," you know. Is, that's what we, I ain't, we used to say we ain't ready. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 was ready, you was a ready brother or you ain't ready. But just, yeah, yeah. That, that's what we used to say. You know, Gary, I'm on the board of directors of the uh, Arts Council for Long Beach, right? And I'm just really happy to be the vice president and president elect. It puts me in spaces that I probably normally would not be in, but it is really enriching. And and I mean, I'm, you know, I'm at the symphony. I'm at the opera, you know, I'm seeing artists painting, you know, fine artists, the painters, you know, right, right. it's just every type of art, you know, it is really, really enriching okay. for me. And I, you know, frequently have these conversations about fine arts, right? And right. for me, the contemplation is this. Okay, so Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Tchaikovsky, you know, classical artists. So what you saying? Stevie Wonder's not a classical, classical composer? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you European classical. I mean, to my mind, uh, Duke Ellington, uh, you know, the greatest composer of all time, uh, and to many of the European minds as well. But yeah, cl classic meaning standing the test of time. You know, mm -hmm. certainly jazz, blues, R and B, soul, gospel compositions, ragtime, rock uh, compositions mm -hmm. that, are, that are classic. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I mentioned Duke Ellington. Uh, people frequently, I'm asked, why do I mention him so much? Well, Duke. Uh, just, just quickly, uh, brother Greg is Duke is Sounds of Blackness music mentor. Uh, even though I never met him, uh, my mom sang 
uh, for him, but but uh, a great jazz singer, Doris Hines. But I never met him. Um, but the reason I say that, uh, we hear Duke's name and we think of jazz, and of course we should. But too many people don't know, as I know you know, Duke wrote, recorded, and performed spirituals, gospel anthems, hip, blues, Afro African songs, of the music, every sound of blackness. Mm-hmm. So when people say, you know, how is it that you, you guys do so many different genres? Did you create that that template? No, uh, Duke Ellington had that template long ago. So that's why we call Duke our music mentor. You know, that's incredible because uh, one of our yeah. favorite pastimes is to study uh, here at the Dream Creator Studio is to study music from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, Harlem Renaissance. I mean, we really yeah. go deep you know, into that. And I love Duke Ellington, man. And and that was oh, the yeah. club music. That's what, you know, that's what yeah. I'm bothering. That's what, that was the club. You went in there and it's a whole orchestra right. there, right? You know? That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, we recently did a show with uh, Mr. Bill Doggett, and we're going to have to have him back on. But Gary, oh, you may be able to appreciate this. Work with him. Oh, yeah, have you? Okay. Yeah, this? Yeah, do- mention, mention the name Doris Hines. And hopefully okay. he'll remember. But yeah, I I got a picture of him uh, over in my my living room. Yeah. yeah, he he was sharing a story about uh, uh, what was it, Swan Records, you know? Yeah. And um, it was just really fascinating to listen to and explore, take a walk down that that, that history of of black music culture, right? And yeah. listen, you know, think about those days and times and how they were recording and and all of that, you know. So let me ask you this. So Duke Ellington's putting the whole orchestra and it's one take. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's, you know. Can y'all do that now? <laughs> <laughs> we, we try, brother. We every now and then. But that was the standard for them. You yeah. know, uh, you know, none of this uh, nip it and fix it and tuck it kind of thing. But that's the level of, of discipline and expertise, you know, that, that we've lost. Uh, to to a large degree, and that we need to retain, and that we're trying to to help uh, bring back. All right, so Gary, you talking to your your nephews and the youngins around you, and they making the music on their computers and all this whole thing. Right. All right, where's the musicianship? Right, you know what we encourage them, and fortunately, right here, my brother, um, not only in the uh, the public school system. Which, which both Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and Prince and myself, products of Minneapolis public schools uh, 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 system, uh, education academically, uh, athletically, and musically. But right here in, in our community, we have music schools uh, in the heart of, of the hood. Uh, one is uh, Walker West Music Academy. Um, and, and so many others where we are training. Um, the uh, African Drum uh, Academy, well, it, it, it teaches African drumming, but also other instruments and so forth. So we are doing that here in Minneapolis to really teach uh, the students instruments, uh, how to, to play a wide variety of instruments at a young age. And they can start at almost any age um, and, and continuing on. So because we come even going back to our African roots uh, from a tradition of, of master musicians that we need to not let uh, die. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's incredible, incredible stuff. Well, you know what? We're right at the end of our time. I want to say this to you there, Brother Gary, man. I appreciate you so much, and I appreciate Sounds of Blackness. Uh, you know, time for reparations is uh, it's out there. You guys see the link in the chat? Go ahead and listen to that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Gary Hines, I'm going to call you offline so we can see if we can come together. We tried something last year, but we couldn't right, quite right. get it. We tried. Couldn't, we came close. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it this we'll time. Get right? it. Yes, 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 yes. Good. Any last words you want to say to the people? Uh, just a hearty thank you um, for your support of Sounds of Blackness. For some of you, uh, you know, for this is the 30 year anniversary of, of Optimistic. So much of the country and the world knows the sound for the past 30 years, even though this is our 50th anniversary. Uh, but thank you. We, we thank God for you. We thank God and we thank God for you. And we, we encourage you to please get in touch with us and stay in touch with us online. Our website, soundsofblackness.org, and all of the different social sites are just our name, whether it's 
uh, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Just look at Sounds of Blackness. And you know what? Many of you have asked uh, online about our T-shirts, our merchandise. Uh, please go to soundsofblackness.org. Uh, and when you purchase it, it's not just supporting Sounds of Blackness. And we are a nonprofit, by the way. But but what we do as well, we don't just uh, talk the walk. We walk the talk. And so we dedicate a portion of the proceeds of anything we sell to the George Floyd Scholarship Foundation. Mm, awesome. 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 There it is. It's in the chat there. I don't have my glasses, so I hope I spelled it right. I did. Okay. Very good. Yes. Uh, you know, that's beautiful. Always giving back. And, you know, that's important for all of us out here uh, in the, in these art spaces is to yes, give sir. back. It's all about community. We too at Dream Creator Studio, we uh, are organized as a nonprofit and we do give back uh, quite a bit. Uh, it's not easy out here. And so we'll talk to you a little bit about how you can help us help the community. You know, uh, you just uh, spurred that uh, in, in my mind there, Brother Gary. We got some things coming up that we're going to announce in these next coming days. Thank you so much for your for your music, you know, and for your essence and for your contribution to culture, to community building, community development. This is all important in this time of cultural revolution. And I mean that from the depths of my heart. Uh, you know what, y'all? If you have missed this, it's okay. We're on demand. Just go to Coffee Conversations with Greg J. That's the page on Facebook. Kalimba Song Coffee Company. You know, we import coffee from Cameroon, West Africa. You get on our Facebook page and this is live there. Uh, you can go to Beach City Radio, beachcityradio.com. The audio version, we'll put that up a little later on today. And in that one, we will include, I'm going to do Sick and Tired and I'm going to do uh, 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 time for reparations. We can put it in there and it'll be available on any podcast that you, uh, platform that you get your favorite podcast. Uh, we're on Spreaker, iHeart, Apple, Google. Just look it up. Coffee Conversations with Greg J. We're out there across all the major ones and you can get the audio version and take us wherever you like. I know sometimes people, we like for you to see our handsome faces, but uh, you might just want to hear the audio as you're driving along. You know, that's what's up. The podcast. You know, Thursday, we got the next Coffee Conversations with Greg J. We're approaching September 11th. What is that? 20 years later? Man. You know, and so uh, we're going to talk to our friend Skip Dillard out of uh, WBLS in New York City and just chop it up, get his reflections, get his perspectives on what happened on that day. And what is the blessed hope as we commemorate the tragedy, the act of terrorism on this country as they ran those planes into the World Trade Center? What are we hoping to visualize right now? All right, y'all. Uh, oh. Don't forget town hall meeting Thursday at six o'clock. Please be there uh, so that you can learn. If you're in California, you know, you can learn all about this uh, recall election out there. It's uh, important if you are being complacent. It's not a time. To, one thing I'm getting out of this is not a time to be complacent about your vote on this one here. So Thursday at 6 p.m. We'll have a stellar panel of uh experts in the political realm to give you information and perspectives. Gary Hines from Sounds of Blackness has been with us this morning. Gary, make it an excellent day. I don't know, he can't hear me, he might be frozen, but that's okay. Thank you, brother Gary. Thank God. you, my brother, God bless you, man. We appreciate you, love you, brother. Love you too, sir, and uh, peace and blessings. All right, everybody, love one another. Love one another. Love one another. Peace and blessings. <laughs>